tonight. The U.S. military is warning oil output may dip and cause massive shortages by 2015. So what does this mean, and why is the U.S. military coming out with this prediction? Here to weigh in is investigative journalist Webster Tarpley. Webster, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Now, you know, oil is often one of those kind of underlying intentions that critics say drives U.S. foreign policy. So I'm wondering with uh, this prediction, if you think uh, there's something more behind it than just uh, the report at face value. Yes, it is a, a devious uh, event. And what has happened now is the U.S. Joint Forces Command, not just any command, but joint forces, meaning special operations, uh, uh, special, uh, well, counter gangs, some would say. They're predicting that by 2012, there will be no more surplus production of oil left in the world. And by 2015, there will be a shortfall of 10 million barrels of oil every day. 12% uh, or so of current production simply will not be there. Now, let's take a deep breath. Uh, if we step back, the U.S. Joint Command, again, it's special operations. Uh, who runs this? U.S. Marine Corps General James Mattis. Uh, and this is the general who goes from Task Force Ripper in the first Gulf War to the massacre at Fallujah in the more recent Iraq War. A general who is on... What do you think is behind this? Well, this, this guy is not a humanitarian. Uh, the U.S. is using oil as a weapon, and in particular, a weapon against China and against India, and against any challenger power. Anybody in the third world who wants to develop is considered a threat to U.S. world domination. So the idea, therefore, is to get the price uh, up. And that's, that's what, uh, what it is, scarcity in that sense. But it's now, not just the U.S. We're hearing that officials in the U.K. and Paris sure. are also coming out with some assessments. Sure. So what do you it's, make of that? It's the same machine. Remember, global warming and the carbon dictatorship in Copenhagen was supposed to be the means of, of imposing this dictatorship. Now, that is collapsing. The credibility of that has been thoroughly destroyed. So they're now back to peak oil as a kind of um, uh, fallback position. It's also good because it allows you to uh, create demand for dollars. It helps to prop up the dollar, which is otherwise in very bad shape. And in terms of the domestic U.S. austerity regime, you can go very far with this. So we had Bernanke calling for essentially austerity and sacrifice, and you can do this under the, under the aegis of this oil stuff. Now, it sounds a little coincidental with what you're saying, that we're seeing the uh, wrap-up of the BRICS summit with Brazil and Russia and India and China talking about oil and talking about the dollar. And those are both things that you're talking about in this argument. Do you see any connection? Well, if you, if you raise the price of oil to $150 a barrel and beyond, which is what people in London are now saying, then you've essentially solved the problem of the dollar from the U.S. point of view for the immediate period. But let me point out, the main influence on the price of oil is not supply and demand. Not. It is speculation, derivative speculation. What happened in 2008? We should remember, at the London ICE exchange, the Intercontinental Exchange, the price essentially went from $25 a barrel in 2003 to almost 150 per barrel in the late summer of 2008, not based on demand, but based on derivatives, based on video barrels, based on pure speculation. Notice okay, that these so reports now, never talk about that. Okay, so now we're talking about economics, but this report came out from the military. So why do you think right. the military is saying this? Uh, of all people. I mean, why not because energy? Because this is now the line of the, well, the Department of Energy is doing the same thing. The, the entire Obama regime has now switched into a much more pessimistic and I would say Malthusian view. Limited resources, it's the stuff we know from, uh, from Jimmy Carter. Uh, the, the people in London who are doing this include uh, Sir Richard Branson, who has got a gaggle of wealthy ideologues, Malthusians, and rent seekers around them, people who are in solar energy and want to get that subsidized. And they're talking about $150 a barrel uh, quite soon. Uh, you've got also a group of consultants, uh, oil consultants in London, who do this kind of thing just about once in every decade. Going back to 1865, when the leading British economist of the day, Jevons, called for peak coal, peak coal in Great Britain, and that was also a fraud. The other thing that we would want to point out is the oil crisis, say, of 1973-74, was essentially orchestrated. It was staged. There had been a meeting of the Bilderberger Group at the Salzjobaden Hotel near Stockholm months before this took place. So the 400% increase in the price of oil of that year had also been thoroughly staged and orchestrated. Uh, the other thing, 
sanctions, if you want to increase oil production in the world, well, Iran is now under three rounds of sanctions. Iraq is coming out, hopefully, of 20 years of war and sanctions. Uh, other countries are denied access to the most modern oil technology by sanctions and by various informal controls. There's new production coming online. We have Alaska, Brazil, Uganda, Oman, Greenland, all of these areas, and new production that goes with that. Plus, the predictions that they're making about the, the use of oil in some place like China may be overblown because of the 21 nuclear reactors which the Chinese are now building and other people could be building as well. So it is a fraud, it is a hoax, but the reason for this, again, is use oil as a weapon against the third world, use it to prop up the dollar, and, and use it to motivate austerity and sacrifice for people in the United States, Europe, uh, and Japan because the bankers are looking for bigger and better bailouts and they want that money used in that way. Uh, what about conflicts? What about political conflicts? You know, they're warning about uh, those being heightened if this kind of situation uh, with oil was to actually occur. What do you think that's about? Certainly. The, the entire basis of United States foreign policy is to, dis to deny certain countries oil. China is obviously the biggest target. India, although India is theoretically sort of a friend of the United States, they're also targeted. And anybody in, in Africa who's interested in development. So if you can create a, a, a scarcity regime of oil, you've essentially strangled everybody in terms of their economic aspirations. Uh, but you've also got these, the idea of sabotaging pipelines. If you, if you believe in, in, uh, in scarcity of oil, you should be promoting pipelines. Or how about Obama? He has said he, he wants to drill for oil off Virginia, where nobody really knows if there's any, any well, oil. Some people say that was just a political win for oil companies, kind of political but, posturing. Yeah, or but at the same time, he says no drilling on the coast of Alaska, no drilling on the entire Pacific coast of the United States. And it's up there in that, that Alaska, uh, Arctic Alaska polar area, that the biggest reserves are presumably to be found. Right? You've got the Greenland Rift, you've got the, uh, the, the, uh, the basin between America and Asia, and above all, you've got Alaska with something like 90 billion barrels. Obama has locked that all up. Is this somebody who believes that there's a real scarcity of oil? I really don't think so. All right, Webster. Well, thank you for uh, bringing us all those insights on this interesting report that the U.S. military came out with.